All right, now we're gonna do a kinematics example problem. So let's say we have a ball that starts at a height of y equals zero, and it is given an initial velocity of 15 meters per second, and is thrown at an angle that is 20 degrees above horizontal. We could write all this in words, but I'm gonna draw a picture instead. Um, so, we know that it is going to follow some path that looks like this. Uh, so the question is, how long will it take it to get to this height of y equals zero? So if it's like thrown from ground level, how long does it take it to hit the ground? So that's part A. That's part A. Uh, part B, will be how far does it go? And by that, I mean in the x direction. Uh, it would be possible to find out the length of this arced path, but that's really hard and we're not gonna do that um, in this class ever. So anytime we're talking about how far does it go, I mean in the x direction or if it's like falling in the y, in the y direction, um, but not you know in this diagonal curve direction. Okay, so. Remember these and write them down, I'm gonna erase them. <laughs> okay, so we wanna know how long it takes it to get over here. Uh, so we want to find T at that spot. The only other thing we know at that spot is that Y equals zero. So that is a clue that we will have to use the Y direction to solve for what is going on there. So anytime we have a velocity at some angle, we can break it into its components. So uh, 15 meters per second at an angle of 20 degrees, that's gonna give us 15 cosine 20 in the x direction and 15 sine 20 in the y direction. So this is vx, this is vy. So Vx is equal to 15 times the cosine of 20, which is 14.1 meters per second. And the y component of the velocity is 15 times the sine of 20, which is 5.13 meters per second. I'm kind of rounding everything to sig, uh, three sig figs. So um, if you round things, you might get, if you round things differently, you might get slightly different answers, um, but you should be close to, to what we get at the end. Okay, so these, these both, because this is the initial velocity, these are both initial velocity components, right? Uh, and and, and it, uh, that's important because Vy, the y velocity, is going to change as we, as we move along here. So it is, it is important to specify that as the initial y velocity. We might have a different final y velocity. Okay, so we want time. We think we need to use the y direction to get it. So let's write down everything we know in the y direction. y initial, y final, vy initial, vy final, ay, and t. Okay, so we know y initial is zero. We know y final is also zero. vy initial we just found, that's 5.13 meters per second. vy final, we do not know. ay, again, assuming this is on Earth, unless we're told otherwise, minus 9.8 meters per second squared. And time, we do not know, but we would like it. Um, yeah. Okay, so uh, the only thing that we don't care about is Vy final. So the other five we either know or would like to find, so we would like an equation with those five. And if we look through our equations, that is the position equation that has acceleration in it. So that's Y final equals Y initial plus V T plus one half A T squared. So plugging those in, that looks like zero equals zero plus 5.13 T plus one half times minus 9.8 T squared. It kind of looks like we might need to do the quadratic equation, but we do not because this term is zero, which means there's an easy solution. We just divide both sides by T and we get zero equals 5.13 uh, minus, so a half times 9.8 is 4.9 T 
t. So 5.13 minus 4.9t equals zero. So add 4.9t to both sides, divide by 4.9, and we get something a little bigger than one. We get t equals 1.05 seconds. Again, keeping our three sig figs. So this is the answer to part A. It takes the ball 1.5 seconds, one 1,000, to get from there to there. All right, so that's, that's part A. For part B, we wanna know how far it goes in that time. Or in other words, for part B, uh, I'm gonna leave the time up, but I'm gonna erase this. So for part B, we want delta x. Okay, so things we know about the x direction. Um, we're not gonna write down all the variables because there aren't that many because ax equals zero as it does often for these problems, which means vx is a constant and it equals 14.1 meters per second. So this velocity is 14.1 meters per second is not changing, that's staying the same. Now, if we have constant velocity, our position equation, x final looks like this, x final equals x initial plus vt. Well, we really want delta x, so we want x final minus x initial, so we could move this to the other side, or we could call x initial equals zero, you know, whatever. <laughs> Whichever way, the point is, what we're actually looking for is this vt, because um, if x initial equals zero, x final equals vt, that's what we want. Okay, so uh, v is 14.1 meters per second, Uh, and our time is 1.05, and multiply those together, we get 14.8 uh, meters. So that is our distance in the x direction. So uh, part A, you can see, you needed the answer for part A this time to solve for part B here. Um, so if, if we had only been asked part B, that is, you know, okay, here's how the ball is thrown, how far does it go? Um, we would have had to find this time anyway. So, you know, we had to find the answer to part A to solve part B. That's the, that is how you get to the answer for part B.